this video we'll be looking at uh, two specific questions. So first of all is why do we use genetically uh, engineered bacteria to make human insulin for the treatment of diabetes? And another question will be about the use of stem cells in uh, diabetes treatment. Uh, these are relatively common exam questions and uh, sometimes they, some people find them a little bit tricky is because there are often links to other chapters, specifically to chapters 21 uh, and 22 about biotechnology and genetic uh, techniques or manipulation techniques. So the first one is uh, talking about genetic and en genetically engineering bacteria to make insulin, which is a very common example for genetic engineering. So in the past, before having this uh, sort of genetic technology, um, doctors have often just taken the uh, insulin from pigs, but there were some issues with using pig insulin, uh, for example, allergy problems, the ability to purify the pig insulin to make sure that there are no pathogens in them uh, before injecting into the, into the patient, and also there are religious or ethical issues involved. Eventually, we got this technology of genetically engineering bacteria uh, by putting a human insulin gene or into them and so we could make the bacteria make human insulin so that reduces all of those problems so here we need to talk about what are the benefits of those three things so first of all there is a higher yield uh, of human insulin because rather than trying to maintain pigs or livestock um, which takes time first of all uh, you buy it's really, really easy to actually just grow bacteria in a lab, in a Petri dish, um, because all you need is the right temperature, which is easy to maintain, and some glucose uh, nutrient solution and uh, moisture. So it's really easy to grow bacteria, and, uh, and they also replicate and produce insulin very, very quickly. So it's a much higher yield than extracting it from livestock. Also, we can get purer insulin in, uh, in this case because uh, the bacteria would mainly just be making human insulin and nothing, uh, nothing else much, and so it's easier to actually purify it. And this would lower the risk of allergy or indeed any sort of uh, diseases that could be passed on. It's also much cheaper as well because actually genetically engineering the bacteria to, uh, is it's a relatively easy and cheap process. And also uh, the cost to maintain those bacteria uh, for making insulin is also is, is a really low cost. Like I said, you just need the right temperature, which is easy to maintain, um, and also some glucose and nutrient solutions, really. And it's, it's much, much cheaper than trying to maintain a farm of pigs just for making insulin. And lastly, we'll, there will be no religion or ethical concerns of in this particular method um, because you won't have to worry about uh, the use of animal products or anything like that. So for questions, uh, I would exam questions, I would imagine that this would be one of them. And then you can talk about the benefits of that in comparison to using uh, pig insulin or livestock insulin. And there might be certain questions that link to uh, the actual process of genetically engineering the bacteria, which is linking to chapter 21.4. So remembering all the keywords in there, so like restriction endonucleases and the plasmids and basically the process of that one. And there might be some questions that could link to uh, the biotechnology of it. So chapter 22.5, specifically about how do you grow the or maintain the growth of GM bacteria? How do you maintain a high yield, uh, the batch culture or the continuous culture, the, uh, the advantages and disadvantages of culture techniques, basically. So I would imagine that this could, the, the challenge for these questions is not so much about learning the content, but more about linking to other chapters and be able to be flexible uh, when you're answering these questions. Then let's have a look at stem cell treatment then. But before we do that, let's have a recap, a quick recap about the current cure for type 1 diabetes specifically, because type 2, there isn't much a cure. So first of all, we can have a pancreas transplant, uh, which is basically giving a new healthy pancreas or working pancreas to the patient. But two major problems with transplants, uh, same as any organ transplant, is low availability of the organ. Uh, and also there is a problem with rejection. So your body, your immune system is able to recognize the antigens on the surface of the organ as foreign in the case of a pancreas transplant and therefore they would try to reject that by destroying that pancreas and obviously um, that's bad because you don't have a healthy pancreas anymore and not to mention the complications that comes with that. So patients will have to take immunosuppressant drugs throughout their entire life 
to stop their white blood cells from attacking the healthy pancreas, but obviously that would increase the risk of literally uh, of any infections that the patient could get. So there is the downside of that as well. Another possibility is to inject beta cells, but then there is a low success rate so far on that particular treatment because it's harder for you, it's harder to actually inject some brand new cells into the pancreas as a regular treatment. As you can see, there are loads of problems with it. So uh, the latest research is talking about the use of stem cells instead as a cure or a treatment. So here are the advantages and disadvantages of stem cell treatment. So the advantages are there are no donors really uh, because we're using uh, embryos. So, and we can, there is a store of them relatively easily. Uh, there are no rejection problems uh, because sometimes these cells could come from the patient themselves or sometimes from early embryos before they even have antigens on them and it's more permanent cure. So the patient, it w if this is successful, the patient doesn't have uh, diabetes anymore. However, it's hard scientifically to control differentiation. So if, it, if you mess up, then there's a risk of developing a tumour and which can worsen to cancer. So that's a bad idea. And also there are obviously major ethical concerns over the use of embryos because um, you, in order to extract stem cells, you would need to destroy the early embryo, meaning you're potentially destroying a new life. So there are major concerns with that one as well. And uh, there are a few ways that people have suggested that we can overcome these disadvantages. Uh, one of the suggestions is to use any spare embryos from IVF. So in in vitro, in vitro fertilization, uh, you would take the sperm cells and egg cells from the uh, couple who are trying to have a baby and then you would try to produce multiple embryos in a petri dish and then you would usually insert a couple of them back to the mother uh, to increase the chances of a successful pregnancy um, and usually in that, in that process there will be some spare embryos left because it's a simply fusing the cells and growing them so some people suggested using those embryos instead rather than let's say from abortion also from the, uh, the other, another method is from the initial uh, group of embryos, we, are trying, we can try to make more stem cells or extract more stem cells from that uh, initial bit uh, instead of trying to produce multiple embryos afterwards to extract more stem cells from them. So essentially you are reducing the number of embryos used in the first place or produced in the first place. So again, less of the ethical concern. Uh, another possible method is to create embryonic stem cells from somatic cell nuclear transfer. So in this particular case is uh, linking to chapter 22 about cloning. So this is a method of animal cloning where you can extract the nucleus from uh, your body cell or somatic cell and then putting it into a, an egg cell, for example, um, and then stimulate that to divide. So it's almost inducing them back to an embryonic state. So you're able to control the differentiation uh, a little bit better at that point. Obviously there's that, there is still scientific difficulties there, but it's again a better method, or at least there won't be any ethical concerns in that point because you, you're, the patient as an adult can give consent to donate his own cells, his own body cells to do this uh, particular process to make new cells from his own body. So in exam questions, they're likely to ask you to evaluate the use of stem cell uh, as a type 1 diabetes treatment or cure, then uh, maybe linking a little bit more about specifically on the disadvantages bit. Then again, you can see there are loads of, specifically in this particular point, there would be some links towards uh, chapter 22 about cloning or the techniques of SCNT. So again, it's about being able to make those links um, when you are revising and so that you learn them and when you go to the exam you're less likely to panic about thinking about what the links might be.